Uh, Mr. Chomsky, we were talking there about uh, uh, American uh, terror, and I think you make a very accurate observation that we are responsible for what we do, but hardly responsible for what uh, other people do, except insofar as we are in a position to influence them. Right. For instance, if there is a uh, mass starvation in uh, a Biafra, even though we did not cause it, there is a sense in which we are responsible if we don't do something to attempt to alleviate it. Right. Now, by the same token, uh, if we are prepared to agree uh, that uh, uh, it is not always easy to taxonomize military action into that which is terroristic and that which is purely a military operation, uh, we, we are left with, uh, with doubts, for instance, about uh, the bombing of Germany in 1942, 43, 44. Mm -hmm. You might contend that this was terroristic and unnecessary, and you might be right, although you're not a military expert, not, neither am I. But I, do I think judge, there's a point to that. Uh, yeah, but I, I do judge that uh, uh, even if we all agree that what we did in Dresden was inexcusable, uh, uh, as a moral question, it's got to be understood in context of what was it that brought us mm -hmm. to Dresden in the first instance. Absolutely. And yeah. what brought us to South Vietnam in the first instance, uh, in my judgment, was clearly uh, a, an uninterested, or I should say disinterested, uh, concern for the uh, uh, stability and possibilities of a region of the world. What, uh, to which what, we period, by talking, about what period do you feel that we had this disinterested relationship to Vietnam? Well, right now. No, at what period did we have it? Did it begin, let's say, 1951, for example? When, well, we, when the State Department bulletin points out that we must help the French uh, <coughs> reconquer their uh, former colony and we must eradicate all Vietnamese resistance down to its last roots in order well, to reestablish the French in power, wish, was that yeah, disinterested? To increase my vulnerability, mm -hmm. I wish we had uh, helped the French. We did. We, we, we supported well, not them. Not sufficiently. Not sufficiently. Well, but, There's no uh, point in helping but, somebody but it's hardly, insufficiently. It was hardly disinterested when we attempted as, you know, with, with tremendous uh, uh, support, in fact, to reinstate French imperialism in South Vietnam. Now, it was disinterested in this sense, and, and I think this is an important distinction for which you mm -hmm. do touch on your book. It's a disinterested act uh, if uh, my attempt to help or your attempt to help a particular nation is in order to spare you the possibility of a great ordeal in the future mm. uh, which will harm you, your family, your children, oh, yes, your republic. And in that now, sense, not, uh, Nazi now, Germany was also disinterested. Yeah, in, so after all, Nazi Germany was conquering Eastern yeah, Europe right. only in order to advance the so, uh, values of sure. Christian spiritual civilization and to no, no, restore no, no, the Slavs no, 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 to their no, no, rightful well, home and so on and so forth. Uh, totally look, disinterested. Look, I follow you. Yeah. I follow you. Yeah. But uh, if, if you want me to pursue that digression, I will. Okay. But, uh, <laughs> but let's suspend it for a moment. Okay. I, I'm distinguishing that kind of disinterestedness between the kind of... With, but that's not a kind, kind of, of disinterestedness. That, you see, that's, that's something which includes as a special case every case of military aggression and colonialism in history. It's all disinterested in your sense. Well, all right, let, let me simply rest my case by saying that there is an observable distinction by intelligent men between a country... Uh, that reaches out and interferes with the affairs of another country uh, because it has reason to believe that a failure to do so will result in universal misery, and that country which reaches out and interferes with another country because it wants to establish Coca-Cola plants there and chase national banks and, and, and whatever and exploit it. Now, that is uh, an observable It's a conceptual distinction. Dis well, let's distinction. distinguish between a conceptual okay. distinction well, and I'm a factual I'm distinction. I'm prepared to do that. All right. It is a conceptual yeah. distinction, but in actual fact, the history of <coughs> colonialism shows that these two motivations can uh, coincide. That is, practically every... I mean, there are exceptions, you know, the, probably the Belgians and, and the Congo are an exception. But by and large, the major imperialist ventures have been in the economic, uh, in the material interest, or in the perceived material no, I'm interest. I'm not interested in the mathematics of the... But well, I'm, what, I'm but I, let, me, let me finish. You have already conceded that it's not merely a conceptual difference. I say it is that a conceptual. There are exceptions. There are a few exceptions. All right. Like, say, okay, the, okay. We're, we're, but right, let's talk about the exceptions, then. Well, well no, but the, the exceptions I, are at the difference. No, wait a minute. The exceptions... I, I mentioned, for example, the Belgians in the Congo. Mm -hmm. There, they didn't have... They didn't even pretend to have a civilizing mission. Mm -hmm. There, it was pure material self-interest. These are the exceptions. There are, as far as I know, no exceptions on the other side. There are, there are, I mean, maybe I've left out a case of history, but as I see the history of colonialism, the great mass of cases are cases where a powerful country was working in its perceived material self-interest and was covering what it was doing to itself and to the world with uh, very pleasant phrases about uh, preserving Christian values or helping the poor benighted natives or one thing or another. Now, there are a few exceptions where there was pure predatory imperialism. 
no, not even any pretense of doing anything, but these are quite rare. Well, not and all we're not, in the mainstream not, not, not of imperialism. Not really. the, the, pure uh, predatory imperialism? Uh, sure, rare, yeah. the, the history of the Roman Empire. Well, let's take more. Uh, I mean, the, since the Industrial Revolution. Uh, uh, since the Industrial Revolution. Well, no, if, if, if you say the people have refined the art of apologetics, I don't deny it. But uh, it, is, it is also true, and I think manifestly true, uh, that uh, uh, there have been interferences with the affairs of other nations whose purposes were, in my judgment, manifestly benign. For example? Well, for, for instance, the Truman Doctrine. Oh, I don't think that was manifestly benign at all. That was an attempt to well, the Greeks develop an order. Well, the, 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 the Greek situation the, 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 was benign, the, the, not at all. We were I say to... the Greeks' testimony is more interesting to me than yours. Which Greek testimony? <laughs> the, testimony the testimony of the, the, the tes thousands of people who were thrown into jail and... Uh, well, not, 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 no, not, I, I, I grant not the testimony of the Greek communists who were beaten. Or the Greek peasants yeah. who were... Well, know, I, I, there again, is it a conceptual difference that uh, uh, between the person who desires a life under some kind of freedom and one who desires life under some kind of who, who, was uh, it under the, communism? Uh, well, uh, no, for, because there's no there's no such opposition in Greek there in Greece. There was a distinction between a very repressive regime which we instituted in 1946 and another regime. I don't know what it would have been that would have grown out of a victory of the so-called communists. Now, if uh, you see what we did was had nothing to do with freedom. What we this instituted is, was this a is absolute historical romantic. I don't because the number, the number of people who were slaughtered in Greece first by the communist insurgency, then by the Nazis, then again by the communists. But, uh, uh, the Nazi communist insurgency before the Nazis? Uh, uh, Which uh, one not insurgency, mean? conquest. C communist conquest before the Nazis uh, communist in insurgency. Prior to the Nazis the, the in civil, the, Yes, the civil war of the uh, early 40s. My of the point, early my, my prior point to the Nazis? The, the no, Greeks, uh, your history is quite no, confused. There. No, 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 there, was no, there was no communist insurgency prior to the Nazis. There were communist resistance bands well, that fought a, against this, the Nazis. This is a matter of nomenclature. The point is, that the the forty year old or the the forty five year old Greek has fought three times mm -hmm. uh, in uh, certain ventures there in one of which uh, they acknowledge that we bailed who, who them is they? out. Uh, who is they? The rulers well, of the, Greece yeah. acknowledge that. No, 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 also the people. Oh, of, I'm, of not, I'm quite unaware of that. I'm quite unaware that the people of Greece have well, spoken even, on even, this issue. Even Papandreou, you like him, I assume, because he hates us. <laughs> no, not, pa at pa not at all. Papandreou. George Papandreou Pap was one of the people who I'm was talking about. We and yeah, and I'm talking about Andrea, which makes it even. Because yeah. Andreas Papandreou is, is, is both on very, issue. both on record as being grateful to President Truman for his intervention in that part of the world in 1947. Well, in that case, I agree with him on that issue. I mean, I really yeah, do. I, I think th we had yeah. no right to intervene in Greece in 1947. No, now we're talking about rights, and which, I, I gets, don't us think that any which gets us away from the discussion. Right, let's talk about right. Let's talk about whether, we did it whether or not whether or not there is there is such a thing as relatively disinterested international interference. And it seems to me well, that, that, that our that America's is record is rather good. We went through an imperialist phase. But we, we pulled out of it faster than any country in the history of civilization. Well, I, I think we're very deep. Why did we right pull out the of the Philippines, for instance? We pulled out of the Philippines because it became a bad investment. We Why? Because American, uh, Ameri if you look, American agricultural interests were very much opposed to the, uh, back in the, in the mid-30s, they were very strongly opposed to the uh, free trade relationships which allowed Philippine crops to compete with them. That's why we pulled out of the Philippines. Why do, they, why do these agricultural interests authorize us to intervene in South Vietnam? They didn't. If you consider this, this is because a, we didn't intervene on the basis critical of, dimension. No, I say that in the Philippines it was the critical dimension. Look, the world is a complex place. You know? I'm there are certain <laughs> interests that were involved. MIT in our, is a complex place. Well, there were certain interests that were involved in our Philippine venture. There are different <coughs> interests that are involved in our Vietnam venture. You mm -hmm. see, our Vietnam. Don't forget that with the Second World War, America's imperial interests expanded enormously. I mean, prior to the Second World War, we were sort of a marginal imperialist power, except for the Monroe Doctrine. But since the Second World War, we became the world's major imperialist power. And Vietnam is simply one piece of an attempt to construct a very large integrated world system, yeah. of which Greece was another piece. Yeah, we became an imperial power, Mr. Chomsky, in this sense, in the sense that we inherited primary responsibility for uh, a, any chain of action that might involve us in a third world war. No, I don't believe And, that's what and something that might involve the entire world in Holocaust. And under no, the circumstances. Uh, well, I know you don't believe it, but but uh, in but fact, I think that our, it might our, be refreshing our, to listen to this point of view, yeah. which is that uh, there are people who do believe oh, sure. that that America unhappily and certainly not desiring it inherited the responsibility for trying to abort international Holocaust, uh, and has from time to time done so by such ventures as the Truman Doctrine, martial aid, and things like that. No, I don't agree. With martial aid, not just no. Martial aid is quite different. First of all, martial. Mm. I'm sorry. Yeah. 
I interrupted you, I'm sorry. Yeah. Well, first of all, uh, you've now mentioned Marshall Aid for the first time, and Marshall, aid ha Marshall Plan Aid has to be distinguished quite sharply from the Truman Doctrine. Why? Why? Because the Truman Doctrine was a doctrine of military intervention, and the Marshall Plan was our first attempt at a major but aid But you, you do understand just, that sometimes a, a soldier can be as useful as a bushel of wheat, don't you? No, look. Nevertheless, if we're going to be at all clear about the American role, we're certainly going to distinguish between military intervention and economic intervention. They're mm -hmm. very different in the way they function. Now, the fact of the matter is that neither was disinterested in your sense, I don't think, but they're very different in the impact that they had. Uh, the Truman Doctrine, I think, was a disastrous venture. I think the Marshall Plan uh, was arguable. I mean, well, one understood well, what how it was do you for, you know, explain the schizophrenia? I don't agree with how, it. How do you explain the schizophrenia of a public which willed both more or less simultaneously. On the one hand, you say either. the yeah. public is in public didn't will either. disinterested. The public oh. didn't will either. Well, the government, the government, all right, the government. Oh, the government, well, the, oh, yeah. because, because both were... But the government backed by the public, how's that? How, how do you explain that the same government on, on Monday uh, did the Truman Doctrine, which you consider simply sort of be a projection of the evil impulse of the government, and on Tuesday did something which you consider to be very good? I didn't what say happened I to the government between Monday and Tuesday? Uh, first of all, I didn't say I consider it to be very good. I said it's, very, it's rather different, and, and one has to bring different standards to bear in evaluating it. But why, why is it different? Let me give you an example. Suppose you're a farmer, because uh, and, and, temper, and, and, and you need agriculture, the, uh, you need fertilizer, yep. so you apply to me for fertilizer, but just before I get it to you, somebody comes up with a bayonet and is about to, uh, uh, is, is, is about to make it impossible for you to continue you, farming. Now, you see, you're in that particular instance, is there a strategic difference? between my giving you the fertilizer and my giving the, the soldier who well, routes that's not, so you're, you're talking the about the dream world. The real world is one, because the real world is one in which the alternatives were bringing, uh, coming with a bayonet, which is on an American rifle held by an American-backed uh, Greek soldier, and the alternative to that was giving the kind of aid which was used, in fact, to construct the kind of society in Western Europe that we wanted to see developed there. Now, these are two very different things. It's a very different thing to introduce uh, uh, to run for the Greek army uh, a counterinsurgency program with uh, military support and many military men involved. That's one kind of thing, one sort of repression imposed on the Greek population through American intervention. One might argue whether it's right or wrong, but mm -hmm. that's, that's why, to be very sharply why do you distinguished. Say imposed? Why do you say imposed? Is it because your presumption here... My, my presumption uh, is, is that Your presumption here is, is that the Greeks well, let me tell you, would so like the yes. kind of regime no, which look, my, resulted... My, my, my assumption is that all intervention is imposed by any country. That is any... You see, I, well, I believe that quite generally... Did we impose on the French when we liberated the na them from the Nazis? Was that an imposition? We didn't conquer France. We moved the, the, the Germans hell out we of... didn't. Just from, from an outside we, invading yeah, force. We invaded But France. we didn't conquer it from its own people. See, in Greece, we were trying to conquer it from its own people. But there you're willing to credit the anti-Nazis as their own people, but you're not in Greece willing to credit the anti-Communists the, the as German their army, own people. The German army was there. But, but, there was no outside army in Greece other than ours. Look, there are modalities of outside intervention. Oh, but look, there's a very sharp difference yeah. between... There, there were, it, just a minute, there's a very sharp difference Laval between... was not a, a Nazi. But, but Laval, Laval wouldn't have lasted for five minutes without the German army. And no, no would, no would Makarios have lasted for five minutes without the help of Russian aid. Uh, but wait a minute. In fact, big, as you know, no when Russian Stalin troops, got tired no of Makarios, troops, he pulled out. Uh, but look, now let's, let's be careful again. I mean, there's a difference between... First of all, I'm opposed to military aid to other countries, whether by us or by the Soviet Why? Union. Well, let's come back to that because it's a more important thing. And that is that I'm even far more opposed to the uh, imposition of regimes by foreign troops. Now, in the case of Germany, let's say, in the case of France, the, uh, the, uh, Pétain, gov the Pétain Laval government, the Vichy government, was supported by German troops. Mm -hmm. Had the German, mil they weren't throughout the country necessarily because there was certainly indigenous support. But there's no question that if German military force had been withdrawn to the other side of the Rhine, uh, then there would have been a, an overthrow of the Vichy government and France would have had some different form of government. Now, in that case, our invasion of France was, uh, whether one likes it or not, was, is, it was in reaction to an occupying external force. It's just pure confusion to identify that with the case of Greece when we were trying to liberate, uh, we were trying to select the kind of society that Greek, Greece would have and we were trying to save the rulers that we had designated as appropriate from their own population. There were no outside forces. But don't you realize that in your book, uh, and that's why you're not willing to, to be consistent in carrying out this argument, you, you're constantly talking about our satellizing of places like uh, uh, Cuba and the Dominican Republic and so on and so forth, mm. uh, and yet we never occupied them oh, in the sent, sense in which you're oh, talking about. Well, well, we never occupied the Dominican Republic. We sent 25,000 troops there in 1965. No, in no, an I, occupation. I, no, I'm talking about 
pre... I'm, I'm talking well, about the American the, Marines were in there dozens well, of times. Oh, I, let, well, I think I mean, you're being evasive, and I don't think you want to be. No, let no, me no, ask no. you I mean, this. Is it possible? It's not evasive at all. Is it I mean, possible? You know, we just simply repeatedly no. sent troops to is it possible? Nicaragua, the Dominican Republic, Cuba, etc., etc. Is it possible to satellize a nation without having an occupying army there? Yes, it is. All right, then there goes your French, your tedious French explanation. Oh, not at say. all, because that <laughs> doesn't happen to be, the, you see, we're talking about a real situation. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we could talk about some ideal situation and, you know, have an academic and, discussion uh, I'm about I'm saying, it, therefore, it is possible for real Vietnam to satellize South Vietnam, presumably, without even it's, it's uh, logically uh, occupying possible, it, it militarily in, in a formal sense. Yeah, it, but it didn't happen, though. So there's well, no the, this is an argument yeah. considering which there's there are two points of view. Well, uh, let's discuss uh, it then. Historically. Yeah, in fact, you see, let's there's much more, yeah. if, you, if you want to be serious about it, there's more evidence that South Vietnam tried to colonize North Vietnam than conversely. In fact, South Viet well, look, South Vietnamese commandos were going, uh, military forces, regular military forces were going north uh, considerably earlier than, than the time when we even proclaimed that the infiltration began from north to south. Did they bump into the refugees coming south? The refugees were coming south and uh, were going in both directions, in yeah. fact, in 1954-55, and according, at least according to Bernard Fall, the uh, uh, commandos began going north in 56 or 57. The first claimed infiltration from the north was in 59, and that was South Vietnamese coming south. So if, we, you know, if one wants to talk about, again, the real world, the first motion yeah, of... The trouble is, motion you, you tell, you know, your difficulty, Mr. Chomsky, is, you, in my judgment, you never know when neatly to begin. Your historical well, you, you uh, choose sequence. the point of beginning. Well, well the, po the point really is that uh, if you if you're starting to say that 1959 was a provocation because it was no, it wasn't a provocation. Southern I say, that's when we claim that the I say well, began. but how about the people who were going from north to south who were talking about the misery that had when? been going about Ho Chi Minh and so forth? When was it's that? Like, I mean, well, which people are you talking about? I don't know. Well, well I'm talking about Vietnamese north and, and south. Your uh, uh, trouble, I think, is, is neatly captured in, 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 in the remark made recently by Czechoslovakia that uh, Czechoslovakia is, after all, the most neutralist country in the world since it declines to interfere even with its own internal affairs. Uh, I'm and, afraid and, uh, I don't see the relevance. Uh, well, 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 the, the relevance is very simply that uh, uh, you, you, you start your line of discussion at a moment that is historically useful for you. you that's the I say, grand you pick the, you fact pick the beginning. of you the post-war world right. is that the communist, communist imperialists, by the use of terrorism, by the use of by the deprivation of freedom, uh, have contributed to the continuing bloodshed, and the sad thing about it is not only the bloodshed, but the fact that they seem to dispossess you of the power of rational. May I say something? Sure. Yeah. I think that's about five percent true, mm -hmm. and about, or maybe ten percent true. It certainly well, is. Tr why do you give that? Uh, may I complete a sentence? Sure. I mean, it's it's perfectly true that there were areas of the world, in particular Eastern Europe, where uh, where Stalinist imperialism. Uh, uh, very brutally uh, took control and still maintains control. But there are also very vast areas of the world where we were doing the same thing. And uh, there's quite an interplay in the Cold War. You see, the, what you just described is a, I believe, a mythology about the Cold War, which might have been tenable ten years ago, but which is quite inconsistent with contemporary scholarship. Ask a Czech. Ask, ask a Guatemalan, ask a Dominican, uh, ask President of the Dominican Republic, ask, you know, ask a, you don't, uh, ask you, a person from well, South Vietnam, you know, ask a yeah, Thai. Well, obviously, we can't get away. If you can't distinguish between the nature of our uh, venture in Guatemala and the nature of the Soviet Union's in Prague, What's then the, we have real difficulty. Explain, explain the difference. Sorry.